has been my experience in tutoring adults online in various subjects. To tutor them in English as a second language, and public speaking, and career development. And I'm always surprised when I talk with these folks to discover a couple of things. The first thing I discover is that they always estimate their ability to speak too low. They feel that they need to learn more vocabulary, more of grammar, and idioms, and all the things that go into English as a second language. And they need to learn certain things that would help them comport themselves in public speaking situations and whatnot. And as I get to know them, I'm always surprised that their actual abilities are higher than what they think. Their, their skill sets are more advanced than the way they estimate them. But another pattern is also emerging, and that is nearly everyone I work with wants to be more confident in their interpersonal communication. In fact, when we get to the second or third session, that's really the reason that they've signed up. It's not so much that they're really thinking about speaking as a public speaker like we do in Toastmasters. They're thinking more specifically, how do I relate to my loved ones? How do I relate to my boss? How do I talk to family members and others? maybe about difficult subjects or just everyday subjects, but how can I become more confident in my interpersonal communication? And so I've been really thinking about that, and I'd like to bring some ideas forward this morning that might be helpful to you as you increase your confidence in interpersonal communications. I'd like to frame it in terms of three questions, and these are three very simple questions that I think you can ask yourself that will help prepare your confidence in your interpersonal communication. The first question is, what do I want to communicate? What do I want to communicate? Now I know that sounds incredibly simple, but it's amazing to me how many times we blunder into communication situations and we really haven't thought through about what we want. If you've been trained in crucial conversations, as I know many of you in Mayo have, this is a drumbeat of that series of crucial conversations. What is it that you want? Keeping that foremost in mind. And so I think to increase your confidence, the first thing you do is you think about what is it I want to communicate? And you're crystal clear about that before you engage in the communication. I want you to think for, with me for a minute about how complicated communication really is and why it's so important that you get crystal clarity about your communication before you start. We think maybe that there's only one message or two that's happening between two people in interpersonal communication. But there's a myriad of possible messages that could be happening when we communicate. There's what we think we want to say. There's what we actually said. There's what the other person heard. There's what the other person think we meant by what we said. So when you think about all of these factors, the recipe for disaster is right there in front of us. So it helps us to be crystal clear about what we want. Once we've established what we want to communicate, I think the next question is when? When is the best time to communicate? And this is really critical because I think in many times we want to talk when we're ready without really giving consideration to the other person to know when are they ready. And so when you call someone on the phone and you want to have communication with them, one of the things you might do is say, is this a good time to talk or shall I schedule an appointment with you? And that is the first level of permission that says it's okay to have a little bit more extended conversation. And the other question about timing I think is related to, may I talk to you about something personal? In other words, you're getting their permission in the conversation to go deeper than you previously have gone before. Because if you proceed without that permission, the timing could be off and you might not achieve the result that you've desired. And that brings me to the third question. How will I know that I've communicated. And I think this third area is very problematic because it deals with our expectations. Many people will know what they want and they'll pick a good time to talk about it with people, but then they're confused about what actually happened. They would say, I did not get my way, therefore I did not communicate. Well, that's really not the case at all. The expectation that simply because you have asked for something or told someone something that they're going to change is really unrealistic. If you will control the expectation to say that I will be satisfied knowing that what I wanted to say did get across and the other person received it. I'm a person with a lot of experiences in drive-throughs, restaurants. 
And one of the features of every drive through restaurant I've ever been in and been through has been the confirmation of the order. I'll say what I want, and they will literally repeat back to me what I've just said. And they'll say, does that complete your order? And frequently it, it doesn't. I add a few more things. <laughs> but, but what's happening is a very simple form of communication. I said X, Y, Z. Did you say X, Y, Z? Yes. We do that every day in a drive through restaurant situation, but we don't do that in our personal communication. We will know that we have succeeded in our communication when we know that our receiver has received our message. And it's not silly to ask the person, what have you heard today? What was communicated to you? How did you receive what was said today? And give them that opportunity to let you know whether or not you've succeeded. Because you haven't succeeded in communication when you've said just what you want. You've only succeeded in communication when that person has acknowledged that message and at least uh, is able to say this is what they've heard. Two millennia ago, there was a young man trying to work with others. And he was young, he was insecure, he had great difficulty. And so his mentor gave him some advice that I think resonates through the centuries. The mentor said to his protege, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that comment was directed at that protege's communication, not only in his public communication, but also in the work that he did. If you feel the same anxiety or trepidation that my online students feel, you can overcome that if you'll ask the three questions that we talked about today. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you.